In the previous two lectures, we talked about the first two elements of the marketing mix, namely the product and pricing. Now we're going to talk about the third element, or promotion. Now promotion looks at a broad range of things, but it all centers around trying to get the consumer or the buyer to know about and to be enticed about buying our product. We're going to first start just a little video, a little commercial that uh, kind of goes around what marketers have to think about and deal, deal with on an almost daily basis, it seems. All right, Mars mission. Give me a go, no go for launch. Booster. Go flight. Retro. Go flight. Mission control. We are ready. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Sir. It's the sponsor. Data shows we need to make the logo bigger. Thanks, Mission Control. We are ready. Again. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. That's the sponsors again. Data shows millennials don't like the color. And we need a hashtag. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. What? Search data shows Mars is no longer trending? They want to send them to Pluto. Pluto? 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 Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Two, one. What happened? Oh, sorry, guys. They burnt up their budget. We have to push the launch to Q4. What? In looking at the promotional element, we must kind of understand how consumers move through the process of acquiring a product. How do they hear about the product? How are they become aware of it? And all the way down to when, how do we get them to actually take action and buy the product? Here are four basic re response hierarchy models that are, have basically been researched and put out there. We're gonna focus on just one of them. We're gonna focus on the ADA model. And in the ADA model, where we have awareness, interest, desire, and action, we see that advertising and public relations play a big role in, in kind of getting the process started. It moves us from awareness to interest but it really can't take us the rest of the way. That's where some of the other elements of the promotional mix come in, such as personal selling and sales promotion. In developing an advertising program, marketers must always start by identifying the target market and the motives for the buyer. For here, they can, can make five major decisions known as the five Ps. The five, I'm sorry, the five M's. The five M's of advertising starts with a mission. What are we trying to accomplish? Second, how much money do we have? How much money we have is going to determine kind of how much are the message that we're trying to send and also the media that we're going to be using. And from there, we want to be able to measure how effective and successful our advertising or, or promotional campaign was. So how successful was the Coke ad in your mind? 
Is it going to come through? Are you going to remember it? Well, for many of you coming to college for the first time, this is something that's probably going to hit into your mind and stay there. But one of the things that we think about when we're looking at our mission is what is the objective that we have for our advertising? And one of the things that we have to keep in mind is that our communication tasks, the achievement level, the audience, and the period of time are kind of the four elements of objectives that we want to get through. So the advertising objectives, they need to flow from the prior decisions that we've made on the target market. How have we positioned the brand in our marketing program? And it, basically an advertising objective or goal is a specific communication task and achievement level to be accomplished within a specific audience in a specific period of time. For example, here we have an objective to increase among 30 million homemakers who own automatic dishwashers, the number who identify Brand X as a low sudsing detergent and who are persuaded that it gets clothes cleaner from the current 10% to 40% in one year. By setting an objective like this that has a time limit, that has a very set number, if you will, of what we're trying to achieve, we can see how effective our advertising efforts are going to be. If you take a look at this little ad, who's the advertiser? Well, it depends on where you look. I think if you look on the left side, you're going to see Coop's Paint, and but on the right side, you're going to see who the actual advertiser was, which is Nationwide. So our advertising objectives center around four key elements that we're trying to achieve. It could be basically information advertising. Here, we're aiming to create brand awareness and knowledge of a new product or new features of existing products. We could use persuasive advertising, which aims to create liking and preference, conviction, and hopefully, ultimately, purchase of a new product or service. Some persuasive advertising uses comparative advertising, which makes an explicit comparison of the attributes between our brand and someone else's. Reminder advertising is basically aiming to stimulate repeat purchase of a product and service, while reinforcement advertising aims to convince current purchasers that they made the right choice. Automobile ads often depict satisfied customers enjoying special features of their new car, which is meant to reinforce that, hey, I made a good decision buying that car. Why? 
From an accounting perspective, advertising is treated as a current expense. However, it's really part of a larger investment in building brand equity and customer loyalty. And how much money we're gonna spend on our advertising depends on a lot of factors. It could be the stage of the product life cycle. Typically, new products merit larger advertising budgets so as to build awareness and gain customer trial, where established brands usually are supported by lower advertising budgets. Here, it, oftentimes, it's measured by a percentage of how much I have in sales. It could also depend on what my market share and the consumer base that I have. High market share brands usually require less advertising expenditures as a percentage of sales to maintain their share, where smaller brands or lower market share brands have to spend higher amounts. And there's also the aspect of competition and clutter, because in a market with a large number of competitors and high advertising spending, a brand must advertise more heavily just to be heard. Even simple clutter from advertisements not directly related to com the, the competition uh, creates a need for heavier advertising. Think about in the automobile insurance market. You have all of these companies today that are advertising very heavily trying to get people to uh, switch to their automobile insurance. There's also the aspect of advertising frequency, which is the number of repetitions needed to put a brand's mes message across to consumers that also is going to have an impact on the advertising budget. If my message is hard to get people to understand, uh, I'm going to have to spend more money in my advertising. There's also the aspect of sub product sub substitutability. Brands in le less differentiated or commodity-like product classes, such as beer, soft drinks, banks, and airlines, they require heavy advertising just to establish a unique message and image. But you can also spend too much money on advertising. That's where we talk about advertising elasticity, which is the predominant response function for advertising. It's not really a, a straight line. Um, you can spend too much money. You're getting get to that point to where you spend one more dollar and you get very little benefit from it. So you're either going to spend too much money or too little money. You're trying to find that happy medium right in the correct place. Uh, John Wanamaker, who founded the department store, content, uh, department store industry back in the late 1800s, he is quoted as saying that half of his advertising budget was wasted. The problem is, he didn't know which half. In designing and evaluating an ad campaign, marketers employ both art and science to develop the message strategy or positioning of the ad, which is basically what is the ad attempting to convey about the brand. And it also is looking at it from a creative strategy, how the ad expresses the brand's claims. Advertisers go through three steps, generating the message, evaluating the message, the creative development and execution, and the social responsibility review. Here are some examples of, of message execution that are, are used in today's advertising. For, the, for example, here with the slice of life, here you're showing real people using the product in a normal setting. You may have a family out in the backyard on, at a picnic using a certain type of ketchup or something like this, but it's showing them really using and enjoying the product. And often, oftentimes we can get very creative with our advertising. Here's a manhole cover in New York City, and again, with those, they have steam rising up off of them, so they just made it look like a cup of coffee, and it says, hey, city that never sleeps, wake up, Folgers. So again, you're walking down the street, you see this, it catches your eye. Very inexpensive, but it could be very effective if you have a high traffic area. In looking at the generating the message and evaluating, a good ad normally focuses on one or two core selling propositions. As part of refining the brand proposition positioning, the advertiser should conduct market research to, to determine which appeal works best with its target audience, and then prepare a creative brief, typically one or two pages, that outlines what that message is going to be. This is an elaboration of the positioning statement itself and includes considerations such as the key message, the target audience, communication objectives, to do, to how, to believe, and the key brand benefits and its supports for the brand promise and basically the media. So we're trying to create an advertisement, but we're trying to plan it out before we start with that process. In the creative development and execution stage, the ad's impact depends not only on what is said, but more often than not, how it can be said. And this is where the, the creative execution comes into play. But we also have to make sure that everything that we're telling and everything we're saying in our 
uh, commercial is going to be legal and not, I guess, uh, overstep our boundaries when it comes to social issues. And oftentimes to break through the clutter, some advertisers believe they have to be a little bit edgy and push the boundaries of what consumers are used to seeing in advertising. In doing so, marketers must be sure that advertising does not overstep the social and legal norms, or you don't really want to offend the general public, different ethnic groups, racial minorities, or some kind of a special interest group. Okay, so that's all for part one of our advertising um, lecture. Part two, we're going to get in a little bit more depth.